Hi, I'm Mark Cochran, the director, producer, chief cook and bottle washer for First Do No Harm. And I wanted to make this little video to kind of bring you up to speed. I know a lot of you have donated and we appreciate that. And, I've, and for that, we think you need to have as much information as possible about where we are. Uh, we had expected to be shooting by now, and there have been a number of things that have kind of put us off of that. One of them uh, has been a little bit of the financing, but the other that I wanted to share with you is uh, we've had a very difficult time getting cast members for this project. Um, there have been a number of people, and I'll, I'll try to be careful not to mention names so that nobody's uh, hung out to dry, but there have been a number of people that have come to us about working on this project, and once they found out the full scope of the subject matter, uh, they decided it something they didn't want to be involved in. Um, it seems there's a, a feeling right now in Hollywood or, or a, uh, an attitude that you can do anything you want there as an actor except work on a pro-life film. That's, we've been told that's the kiss of death for an actor in Hollywood today. So that has been very difficult for us. We've, we've had to put our uh, shooting schedule back almost 90 days because we haven't yet gotten all the people that we need that are willing to say, uh, I stand by my convictions, I'm pro-life, and I don't care what it does to my career. And so that's been something we're having to work through. And uh, praise the Lord, we're about there. We've got one more, I think one more cast member that we need to get, and then we can start rolling, and we hope to do that in the next couple of weeks. So um, that being said, one of the things else I want to tell you, I want to introduce somebody to you. Um, the Lord brought to me uh, a gentleman by the name of Isaac Feynman, who is a uh, an expert at fundraising and PR and so forth for ministries and projects like this. And uh, Isaac has been working with us to help promote this project. And one of, the, one of the big things that he did most recently is he went to Denver, Colorado to the CareNet conference. The CareNet is a pro-life conference. It's the largest pro-life conference in the nation. And uh, I think about 1,100 crisis pregnancy centers were represented there. And uh, so I'm going to introduce Isaac to you, and he can tell you a little bit about, about CareNet, what it was like, who he met there, and uh, where we might be going with this project in the future. Isaac, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate the opportunity. I'll tell you, CareNet was incredible. Uh, we were in Denver, Colorado. What a great community to be in, the Mile High City. Uh, the Broncos played, by the way, while I was yeah. there. and. Uh, did a great job, and of course, Cheesecake Factory. I mean, that's yeah. in Denver, so that, that was a good thing. All jokes aside, we had a great time interacting at CareNet. Uh, let me first encourage our friends watching the film today to know uh, that CareNet received the project very well. Uh, they received the fact that it's a pro-life film, obviously very well, because it's a pro-life community there at CareNet. Uh, the fact that it's a pro-family film was something that they were grateful for. Uh, the fact that it deals with a lot of different kinds of people in our culture and society, uh, multi-ethnicities, uh, they respected and appreciated that as well. And the fact that it's a pro-woman film, uh, they appreciate that. Uh, and so I, I hope we can talk a little bit more about that in our conversation okay. today. Good. Well, um, <clears throat> one of the things that's grown out of our relationship is uh, we have been able to uh, bring some people to the project in the sense of uh, being able to endorse what we're doing, that people have actually read the script and said, I really am behind this project. And what we're going to do as we go through this little video today is we're going to show you some of those endorsements and read them to you. And I think we're going to start with one right now uh, with uh, our friend R.C. Sproul, Jr. R.C. said, we are a double-minded culture willing to move heaven and earth to, to, to save a beached whale, but unwilling to protect our unborn. First Do No Harm, taking its cues from contemporary headlines, exposes that hypocrisy, and in so doing, just may awaken the conscience of our nation. I'm hopeful that this film will change hearts and minds and save lives. So that was our, from our friend R.C. Jr. We were really, uh, in some sense, flattered that, that he was that excited about the project and is going to be kind of partnering with us to help promote that. So Yeah, and I think one of the things that you're going to see from what R.C. said in that, uh, I hope people will see as they watch this today, is they'll see the connection of uh, not just the project and a good thing and something we hope you'll give a gift towards, 
but this is a project that's transforming culture. And you hear what R.C. says about the beached whale, for example. Uh, how many people are out there raising the banner and, and standing with signs mm -hmm. and cheering and shouting? Uh, PETA, for example. Uh, and that's not to poke fun at, at them or throw rocks at a specific organization that's different from our worldview. But this film is more than just informational. This film is really seeking to not just engage the culture, but transform the culture. And when you have somebody like Dr. R.C. Sproul, uh, Jr., who recognizes that and is willing to put his picture on it and to put his name on it uh, and to rally the troops, uh, that's an amazing thing, and we're grateful for that. Yeah, we certainly are. Well, tell us a little more about, um, you, you kind of introduced us to your experience in Denver. Uh, tell us a little bit, more, a little bit more about your reception there, uh, maybe even who you talked to and what, uh, what kind of things came of that. Well, I think one of the first things I'd like to hit on uh, is a, a newly found relationship, newly formed relationship that we have uh, with a wonderful nonprofit organization called Movie to Movement. And there'll be a link at our website where friends can find out more. And I think about we can put up some. Actually, if we can put up a picture, uh, there's a there's a, a slide we've got here that shows a couple of projects that they've been involved with. One was a film uh, that was released, I think, in 2006, 2007 by the name of Bella, mm -hmm. a great little pro-life film, not a little, it's a feature film. It did well, it won the Toronto Film Festival. It was a, a sleeper hit that nobody expected, it came out of nowhere. Um, and it's an interesting story. If you get the DVD, in, in the DVD they've got uh, an extra feature where they tell about how they got it, how that actually came to be, and it's, it's an interesting story how it all came together. Some of it parallels what we've been going through uh, in putting First Student Harm together. Uh, the other one is a film they just released two weeks ago on DVD by the name of Crescendo, a fantastic film. And I, I can't endorse that highly enough. Uh, you need to go to their website, movietomovement.org, and order that DVD. I just did, got it in a couple of days ago, and I've already shared it with a couple of people. It's, it's stunningly beautiful. The, the production values are just amazing, and the story is uh, something else that you, that'll stick with you. It's about the story of Beethoven. Of mm -hmm. course, his mother was going to abort him, and uh, she didn't. And from that grew this man that 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 gave us all uh, unforgettable pieces of music that'll last. You know, timeless, forever. yeah, timeless. And again, with that, you can see that th the the theme, the thread there of engaging and transforming culture. What would society be like today without beautiful music uh, that we can enjoy and that's pleasurable? Uh, and music that honors and glorifies God. And that was certainly one of the things that, that he brought uh, to the table for us. Yeah. Sorry Crescendo. to interrupt you. Sorry no, that's fine. That. No, Crescendo is a, a great film. Uh, and, and, and what's interesting is you look at the quality uh, of the production value, for example, of Bella and Crescendo, and uh, get excited because that, that is the kind of partnership that we have now with Movie to Movement and, and the production that we're going to be putting forth uh, but again, for someone to put their stamp of approval on something like Bella and Crescendo and now First Do No Harm uh, is it, just incredible that they would do that. And so we're grateful for that. One of the things that's interesting, when we spoke with uh, <clears throat> Joseph Lipp, who's one of the two founders of Movie to Movement, um, he made the statement after having read the script uh, that this is a story that nobody's told before, hmm. that, that's, that story has never been told this way. And if you... Yeah, well, I won't spend a lot of time, any time about it now, but if you watch the other video we've got online, I kind of tell you what the story is. Um, but it's an angle that's never been dealt with in film. So we're hoping to, to break a little ground there and cause people to think about this in a way they never have before. Yeah. You know, one of the other um, <clears throat> folks that we interacted with is, is a friend of mine, uh, Ryan Dobson. Mm -hmm. Ryan, of course, the, the son of the very famous uh, Dr. James Dobson, founder of Focus on the Family, and uh, now has an organization uh, called... Uh, family talk and uh, just doing incredible things again transforming the culture uh, very very involved in that uh, ryan is going to be on our one of our panels and we'll talk more i'm sure about the panel before our, our project film uh, that we're doing today ends because that's an important piece of sure. of what happened but ryan said sure i'd love to be a part of the project and, and that was just an amazing thing it's been amazing the people that have been drawn kind of like a <laughs> a moth to the flame yeah. to this project that we didn't expect. Yeah. yeah. Kind of come out of nowhere. I'll give you an example of, uh, again, just God's providence on display. We, um, I was in a, uh, a workshop with my friend Mike Williams, who's a, a comedian, 
uh, by trade, but lives in the Dominican Republic, has a wonderful mission there called Cups of Cold Water. But professionally, what he does is he goes around the country a few months out of the year raising funds for other crisis pregnancy centers. At the end of that meeting, he gave a seminar on fundraising. He uh, asked if I was uh, available to give out some of our DVDs, that eight-minute DVD that we have. And I said, well, sure. I, I brought a box, and I'm in the back of the room. I'd be glad if anyone wants some DVDs. Mark, you should have sent me two or three boxes because <laughs> i got to tell you, we ended up with nothing left, basically. I think I had three or four uh, to give out the rest of the conference. These crisis pregnancy centers are looking for resources. They're looking for ways, really, that they can tell their story effectively and efficiently. Mm -hmm. And so it was exciting to be able to give away our promotional DVD for First Do No Harm. Uh, out of that, though, comes an opportunity not just to give them this DVD, but to let them know there's going to be additional resources. And that's exactly what this film uh, is all about. Not just to tell a story. It's going to be a good story. It's going to be a great story. Uh, but it's going to be a, one that provides them and equips them with resources at the end. Uh, some of the folks, and I'm cheating here, just yep. so you'll know, you're, okay. you're a film guy. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at some, some cards here that I've picked up. Uh, a great resource, uh, fatherhood.org. The Fatherhood Initiative uh, started uh, really to resource and equip men to get them back into the game. And we know men need to get back into the game in, in society. But you go to CareNet and you hear the stories of so many uh, women who uh, either unfortunately aborted their child or uh, were getting close to aborting their child. And one of the main reasons, they said, is the dad wasn't in the game. The dad mm -hmm. wasn't in the game. Mm -hmm. And we hear that time and time again. And uh, in our movie, you're going to see a dad that really, unfortunately, uh, wasn't in the game. And so uh, the importance of fathers being in the process, through the whole process, uh, and not just being uh, what some have said, a sperm donor, for example, uh, but, but really engaging throughout the entire uh, portion of the child's birth and life. Uh, Bethany, Christian services, just walking around, interacting with different people, uh, and interacted with the vice president there. And he said, boy, I love your project. Follow up with me. I want to hear more about what you're doing. A national organization, uh, certainly involved in, in, uh, in crisis pregnancy, uh, but an adoption service. And these folks get it. They're looking for ways to tell the story. And you heard me mention early on of being pro-life, uh, being pro-family, and being pro-women. Uh, they're looking for ways, and this is certainly one of the ways. And I can continue on. Uh, with more resources. I mean, I've got a, a ton of notes here that are helping me to, to remember, but just story after story of people that are so grateful for this opportunity. Well, good. Well, that's what we're, <clears throat> we're uh, very encouraged, uh, you know, that the, the trip to Denver was kind of starting to leap of faith on my part as a producer, because I'm trying to watch the dollars. And, but we were told by a number of people, in fact, the people at Movie to Movement, Joseph Lipp said, if you've got any way you can, you need to be at CareNet. Yeah. Uh, if you remember 2009, I think it was, uh, there was a film called October Baby. And it was debuted at CareNet, and that's where it got its legs. And it really exploded after uh, the exposure there. Hmm. So, um, and, and interestingly enough, you and I have talked, you're a marketer, I'm not. I mean, I know a little bit about it, but... Well, you're a film guy, and I'm yeah, not. Yeah. So... Uh, you kept telling me, you know, we got to, we got to, you got to find your market. You got to find your audience. And I said, well, uh, I haven't told this story really, I guess, but the, 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 the story of First Do No Harm, it was just kind of delivered to me and uh, channeled, if you will. <laughs> I don't like using that term, but uh, it just came to me while I was driving down the road to Paducah, Kentucky one time, and I started dictating stuff into my phone uh, that I knew I wanted, you know, dialogue I knew I wanted to include. And I had never really thought about what to do with this. I mean, I knew I wanted to make a, a film, but in terms of who it would be for or who would need it, or that, that was never part of my, my thought process. And so even as late as prior to your trip to, to Denver to CareNet, we were still struggling over that, you know, what, who the market would be, who, who needs it. And uh, I think you can tell us that you kind of got that solidified in your own mind yeah, there. well, I mean, you can look at a film like this this project, and you can imagine, you know, uh, something like this is going to touch girls that are struggling. Uh, what what should I do? Should I have the baby? Should I not have the baby? Uh, again, I talked about guys earlier. You know, think about a young teenage boy 
that may or may not have been parented well. Uh, probably is not in the church, but may be in the church. You know, you don't know. So many variables there. Uh, think about the mom, the dad, who just got a text from his daughter, for example. I think I'm pregnant. Uh, think about the, the, uh, the high school principal. Think about the, the church youth director. Think about all these people and how they could certainly be a part of uh, the audience uh, for a project like this. When you boil it down at the end of the day, it was so clear uh, first Do No Harm's audience is the Crisis Pregnancy Center, first of all. Uh, their clients, the staff, these are the people that will tell the story. Uh, again, the concept of movie to movement, and I'd like to spend some more time on that before we're finished. Uh, but, but ones that need this, and, and again, this is their story. This is the story of their clients that are coming in donors to their ministry who appreciate and respect and value what they're doing. Hard work. These are some of God's generals. I mean, frontline ministry people that are getting it done for the gospel's sake. And so we realize that if we can, in a sense, be a parachurch ministry, put our arms around them and thank them for what they're doing, give them a tool and a resource to tell their story uh, that's going to empower people, impact lives, again, transform the culture, and perhaps even bring some dollars into their worthy ministry. Uh, we we want to do that. We want to be a part of that. And what I love about you, and I appreciate this very much, I learned this about you early on, Mark. You're not looking to get your name necessarily on this project. You're not looking to be a, a millionaire from a project like this. You're just trying to get the message out. Again, another tool, another resource uh, for the kingdom to be expanded. And I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, this concept, though, of movie to movement, when you resource and you equip uh, a crisis pregnancy center with this movie, and there's many ways that they can get it out, whether it be at their banquet, whether it be in their clinic just giving it out to clients who come in, prospective clients that come in, uh, you, you understand then that, that this becomes more than just a, a movie, more than just a single DVD. People are going to ask questions. We've already talked about the concept of uh, resources and some of these friends that I've mentioned already. Uh, but then this panel idea comes up, and uh, I'll take our friends watching this film today into a phone call that you and I had together with RC, and I was talking with RC, and I said, you know, there's got to be more to this. There's got to be more, and when they finish watching the film, and without going into too much detail, the way the film ends, I mean, it's going to leave a big question mark for people. They are going to be confronted, almost going to smack them in the face in a sense. They are going to be forced to grapple this question, uh, this this answer. Now that I've watched this film, what do I do? Yeah. Now that I've watched this film, what do I not do? Yeah. And that's where the panels come in. Yeah, we're not going to allow them to be too passive after they've seen it. Yeah. It's going to, it's, those, anyway, those people that are honest in their evaluation and thought process are going to, are going to be moved and disturbed yeah. to some extent. Yeah. And that's where RC comes in with this concept of the panel. We were talking with him and, we said, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could get some national pro-life leaders to come on board uh, who may not be actors, so there's not really going to be a role for them in the film directly, but a panel as an additional resource that we can add. And uh, certain names just started coming to our mind, and we made a list of, of folks, and I'm excited about what the, the panel is going to do for people because it's going to empower them once again. Uh, with answers to the question, what do I do? Mm -hmm. What do I not do? And these are questions that really need to be answered because people have that question already, but they may or may not know what to do. Well, and it speaks to the whole concept of not just cursing the darkness, but also providing some light so that people won't be left with this empty feeling of despair uh, and struggling with the question, but they'll be given some resources to, to how to deal with it. Um, we're going to put up another screen here in just a sec of uh, another endorsement by Dr. Walt Larimore. Mm. Now tell us who he is. Well, Dr. Larimore uh, has been I've heard that name for years. Focus on the family, fame for a decade or more, uh, just really well known in, in that that circle of folks. Uh, he was the uh, staff physician at Focus on the Family. That's for right. A just of years, just right? very uh, very impactful with his ministry. He's a prolific writer. Uh, he's a, a prolific speaker. Um, uh, he's written a book about, um, uh, and I, forgive me, I don't have the exact title in, in front of me, but uh, the, the Guy's Body Handbook. Mm -hmm. uh, he's coming out with one soon, The Girl's Body Girls, Handbook. 
Uh, he's actually written some novels as well. Yeah. And hails from this part of the, the country where yep, we North are Carolina. here in Greenville, mm-hmm. South Carolina. He's over from the North Carolina Spent area. Spent a lot of time in Bryson City, North yeah, Carolina. Yeah. So he's someone who's very acquainted with the, the medical uh, arena. Uh, and now somebody who still practices medicine, uh, but it takes the Christian concept of, of discipleship and is now discipling other doctors and helping other people start clinics in areas that may or may not be able to afford uh, good medicine, quality mm-hmm. medicine, and does it in Jesus' name. And again, I'm grateful that he's on our team. Yeah. Well, I'm going to read, uh, would you put up the slide, I'll, I'll read uh, what he had to say for us. He said, practicing in the field of family medicine for over 30 years has given me a unique perspective on the issues of life and death, issues which have been understood with clarity for millennia and have now become less clear without the lens of absolute truth. Through the powerful medium of film, First Do No Harm presents a compelling story that seeks to clear away the foggy thinking of our current culture and let us view the lives of both born and unborn children in a new thought-provoking way. And that's pretty powerful. It is. Well, think about that. Let that sink in. The lives of both born and unborn children. Yeah. There's a part in the film uh, where, where that will be tested, that will be exercised. Uh, and again, without giving too much away, uh, somebody's shot and they're pregnant. And what I love about this film is it's going to force people, again, as we mentioned before, to be confronted with some people in society say it's okay to kill a baby. Yeah. But when someone who's pregnant is shot and they have a baby, now we have to wait and see what happens to that baby. Does the baby live or do they die? If the baby dies, right now in society, that's a crime. Yeah, it's murder. But killing a baby by way of abortion is not. Yeah. yeah so a, we're a grappling with these issues. Terrible ethical in inconsistency that, that we have in the culture. Yeah. Um, so um, as we wrap kind of wrap this up, I don't want to take up too much of people's time, but one of the things that <clears throat> that we still need to to do, and, and we're appealing to you, and I'm, I'm kind of starting to try to restructure the way we think about this whole project, because when we initially started, my initial thought was we need $35,000 to finish this project. So that's $10 from 3,500 people, that should be very, very easy. And there were a couple of, a couple of three things when I first started this that I that have surprised me that I didn't expect. One was that that would be difficult to do. I kind of figured we'd have our money in 60 days and we'd be shooting. The second is the issue of the casting. I really didn't think that this would, I thought it'd be a no-brainer. I mean, it's a great script. Uh, We've had some really good actors that have come forward but then backed off. That surprised me. Uh, And I think on the financing front, after talking to some people that we've, you and I have spent time with, they said, well, you know, you've mentioned that about 3,500 people given $10, but most people probably think if you need $35,000, $10 is a drop in the bucket. There's just no, that doesn't make any, have any impact. And we've gotten some $1,000 gifts from 500, 250, 150, but very few, maybe one or two people have given $10. So what I'd like to encourage you today is to do that. Uh, commit to giving just $10 to this project and encouraging as many people as you can, 10 or 20 others, to give $10. Uh, that's a meal out. Um, and I know, I, I don't take that lightly. I know that's a sacrifice. Uh, I give to film projects myself like this, and I know it's not, you know, the economy is such that $10 is a lot, is a lot more than, than a lot of people will have to just throw away. Um, I don't think you'll be thrown away with this project. I think it'll, be, it'll bring back blessings to you and to the kingdom. If we cast vision for just a moment, going back to the concept of, of movie to movement, uh, by the way, movie to movement is partnering with us so that all gifts are tax deductible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let us make that point, and there'll be a link on the website they can give at. Just simply uh, put in uh, First Do No Harm right. film, and that will allow your gift to be tax deductible, and we'll get the check uh, within a week, uh, week or so's time. So we're grateful for that, that opportunity. But with this concept uh, of movie to movement, I'd like to ask our friends to take it a little bit further than just uh, a $10 gift. We need that, uh, quite honestly, desperately to get this film project completed. Uh, but, but let me just say this. What if we had friends who would make a commitment uh, to, to go just a little bit further, and they would say, I'll give a $10 gift, but I also will commit to prayer 
Absolutely. We need that big time. Absolutely. Big time. Uh, but I also want to ask you to do one thing uh, further for the ministry. I'm looking for friends that will take this DVD that you're watching right now, and I'm looking for friends that would be willing to uh, put four, five, six couples in their home, serve a dinner, simple dinner, uh, coffee and dessert perhaps if they wanted to do that, show this film. Uh, we've got commitment cards that we can get to you, um, and you can very easily help this go from movie to movement. Kind of a little uh, a teaser on the front end of, of that movement is, is this very thing. I mean, Matt, imagine, Mark, if we had 100 people doing this area-wide, uh, and it could be national as well. But uh, showing this film, letting you and I be the presenters, there's no need for you to feel like, oh, gosh, I, I can't stand up and, and talk. It's real easy. Show this film. Give out the You're talking about the little card. promotional video we've got on the website. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, give out the little uh, commitment card at the end. Take them up, say thank you, serve coffee and dessert, and see what happens. Leave it to God. Leave it to God. We believe that God is sovereign. He's in control. If this film is going to be blessed, it's because His hand is going to rest upon it, and He's going to bless it. But we need your help. We really do. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I've said from the very beginning uh, in terms of in terms of God's blessing and so forth is that I really feel compelled that this is something that I'm supposed to do. And I'm going to keep moving forward until the door is just absolutely <laughs> slammed in my face and it can't be done. And so far that hadn't happened. In fact, as you've said, people have come to the project that have been very encouraging. Uh, the other thing I'll put out there too is if you uh, feel like this is something that we could, you and I could come to your church or your civic group, uh, we're doing some of those already, uh, to speak about. We We'd be more than happy to do it if it's within driving distance anyway. Uh, just let us know. Get us in touch with your pastor, youth minister, or uh, civic leader, whatever. And we'll certainly present this, this project uh, anywhere that we can. All right. So I think that wraps it up. Thank you. Thank you. I think for being a part of this. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for spending this time with us. And all I can ask is, number one, you continue to pray. And... Help us spread the word. Tell everybody you know. And we would certainly appreciate it. Bye-bye.